Hi, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here, and we are about halfway through our series of videos that will review the concepts of polar coordinates and polar equations so that you can get ready to use those ideas with a bit of calculus. And that's in the long run going to help you prepare for really what sometimes are the most difficult problems on the AP exam. You're typically going to see a pretty robust free response question where most of the parts are dealing with polar coordinates and then at least anywhere from two to possibly as many as maybe four questions on the multiple choice section that will use the ideas of polar. So let's take a look at our example four here from topic 9.7. We're going to convert rectangular to polar, but now we're going to be dealing with equations, right? We're not going to deal with points at this stage. We're dealing with converting equations. So let's take a look. Once again, we have our very good friends, the the pairings of formulas that we had used to convert coordinate points from polar to rectangular and vice versa. So we're still going to use those, it's just now they're in a slightly different environment. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Uh, I'm going to try to move my camera a little bit out of the way so you can still see me and see all the important things here in the video. So let's read our example four. Convert the following rectangular equations to polar. Verify by graphing both on your calculator and you can use two different graph pages. I'll explain what that means. I'm using the TI Inspire software. If you're following along using a different model of graphing calculator you can still do the same thing. It's just that I have a slightly modified program that really lets you, you see the comparison of the two. So we'll show you that here in just a moment. So if you're going to take y equals 6, which I think everybody is pretty familiar with the graph y equals 6, it's a horizontal line. Well, what would that look like in polar? Well, to graph a, a polar equation, um, and if you're going to move from polar to rectangular, uh, the best thing to do here is just to start to kind of think um, what, what tools do you have at your disposal? And boy, one of them that just jumps out at us is this particular expression right here. The fact that y is equal to r sine of theta. Now what that's going to allow us to do is to just simply replace the 6 with what will be r times the sine of theta. Right? Just using a simple substitution. If y is equal to 6 and y is equal to r sine of theta, then we know that 6 is the same as r times the sine of theta. Now what that's going to allow us to do is to solve for r, get r all by itself by dividing both sides by sine, and let's face it, that is the goal. What you want to do is to get r by itself because once you've done that, you are now in polar form. And, and so you don't have to dress this up as r of theta. You could if you wanted to, but this would certainly take care of this problem. Uh, you could also rewrite the sine denominator as a cosecant numerator. It probably doesn't look any better, but it would be acceptable. In a moment, I'm going to show you graphically what these two things look like, but they are going to be equivalent. All right, let's take a look at the part b, 4x minus 2y minus 1. Now this is a rectangular equation. We're going to convert it to polar. And I know that this is a little bit misleading. When you read converting polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, well that's when you're using coordinates. That's what you when you're using ordered pairs. When you're converting equations, Really, it's you're going to use the best tool that's at your disposal. Sometimes it's going to be these equations. Sometimes it might be um, some kind of a manipulation of the equations that are in the right side box. What you want to do is just take inventory of what's there and then make the decision. So in this particular problem, we see an x and a y. Well, maybe we're thinking that we could somehow use the same um, uh, pairs of equations that we have over here. We could change the x to be r cosine theta. It's something worth trying at least. If it doesn't work, we can always go back to the drawing board. Y is going to be R times the sine of theta. Now I know when you look at this, you think, boy, this is a hot mess. But you have to remember what your main goal is. And your main goal is to simply get the R by itself. Now that we've invoked R into this problem, we can get R by itself fairly easily if we just factor an R out of the 
left side. Now as we do that, you're going to notice, well wait a minute, I can't factor an r out of the left side. Not while there's a 1 here, a minus 1. Well no worries, just add that 1 to the other side because he is going to be your numerator after you divide both sides by what you factored, uh, what r factored from or, or the uh, what's left once we factored r. So here we go, and it's a pretty nasty looking equation. Um, you could change this r to be r of theta, but you don't have to do that. It's still recognizable as a polar form either way, and this would take care of it. And this is actually what a diagonal line, a slanted line, would look like in polar. It's a little, little uh, rougher to look at, uh, say, uh, in polar than it is if we just think about it in rectangular. And then let's take a look at our third and final one, y equal 4x squared. Well, we all know that that's a parabola. So how we handle this? Well, those same formulas that we've been using have been working pretty well for us, so we don't have to abandon them necessarily. So y is the same as r times the sine of theta. x would be r times the cosine of theta. Just don't forget that x is all being squared. So if we continue to work with this a little bit, we can then square the right side. And as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract it over to the left side and have this thing all nice and set equal to 0. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is I want to see what my chances are of potentially factoring out an r. Let's see what happens. If I factor an r out, is that going to help get r completely by itself. And very quickly, you're all going to probably see that, uh oh, that's not going to work. There's an r factored out, and then there's an r that's already buried within this uh, expression in parentheses. Well, it turns out you can divide both sides by r, and you will never have to worry about that r out in front again. Now, I know that's a little precarious. Whoa, what? What allows us to divide by r? r is possibly a variable, right? Well, you can divide by it as long as you can guarantee that it's not equal to 0. And I don't think that r is going to be 0 in this problem because r equals 0 is not going to graph much of anything. In fact, that would just be a dot where the polar, uh, the pole is on your coordinate plane. So you're going to see more than that, obviously, with y equals 4x squared. So we can go ahead and make that happen. And that just basically means that we have sine minus 4r cosine squared of theta equals 0. Now you shouldn't have much trouble getting this r all by itself. Uh, I'm going to add the 4r cosine squared over to the other side. Uh, however, I'm going to decide to flip this around just to keep the r in the left side of the equation. And then if I get this r completely alone, I would just simply be dividing both sides by 4 cosine squared. So it would look something like this. I could dress up the r if I wanted to, and I would just tend to leave it like this. I know you could change this to a variety of things. Sine over cosine is tangent, and then 1 over cosine is another secant. So this is the same as 1 fourth, I believe, uh, tangent times secant, but I don't really think that that makes this look all that much better, to be honest, when it comes time to, to think about what it looks like in polar. Now, as I said before, I promised you we're going to take a look at a couple of graphs. Um, I, I, to speed up the video, I've actually gone ahead and sketched these and copied and pasted them into the document. In fact, if you have access to my solution key, whoops, my solution key, you already have probably seen this. But in part A, if you recall, we had our good friend y equals 6 right here. Well, the graph of y equals 6 in the rectangular coordinate plane is what I've just highlighted there to the right. And then we have him paired up with his good friend. Now the polar form, r equals 6 over the sine of theta. Kind of hard to see that underneath that magenta. But that graph is now graphed over here, as you can see in the picture. And to have those two window panes side by side are so powerful because you can see that the calculator was rendering these the way that it should and I tried to scale my axes to where the grid blocks looked about the same size so that you could really tell that they were indeed the same 
graph. If we look at uh, our part B, here is our good friend, the uh, rectangular version of that diagonal line, which is graphed over here on the right side. And then if I compare him to, let's use a different color so we can see this time. There's our R equation. You remember that we got just a moment ago. And boom, I know it's cut off just a little bit right there uh, in order for it to make it fit. But it, uh, I promise you it was minus 2 times the sine of theta. And boom, we have the same graph. And then finally, if I do the same thing over here, we've got our y equal 4x squared. And we can see how that is our parabola that we see graphed over there on the right side. And then if we compare that with r is equal to sine over 4 cosine squared, which I was able to graph and have it fit on the entire screen this time, notice I have two parabolas that are identically in the same location with the same attributes, same size, and so forth. So there is your first little version of converting from uh, starting with rectangular and going to pair, uh, polar, you can probably imagine what the next video five is going to be about. We're going to put that in reverse and we're going to move from polar into rectangular. Make sure you stick around for that one. As always, thanks for joining.